Time for what? Time for what? Experience in college. Time for reinforcement. Time for liftoff. Aware nothing is impossible unless you think it is impossible. It's college, impossible. college. It's impossible. my college scholarship. Yes. Well, college ran by real fast. You hung in with the best college. Touchdown! First time for everything. Well, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Let's do this thing. Genius. Let's do this thing. Welcome to the show, everyone. We are here in Malibu. Yes, I said Malibu in Southern California. And here we are with an amazing student, Jordan. Jordan, can you introduce everyone about uh, where you're originally from in California or anywhere in the world? And then also tell them what class and what you're studying here. Yes. Um, hi, everyone. My name's Jordan. Um, I'm originally from the San Francisco Bay Area. And I'm currently a public relations student, uh, first year student here at Pepperdine. So now, what made you look at Pepperdine and what other campuses were in the competition? Yeah, um, so I originally applied to mainly California schools. Um, I was looking at University of San Francisco for a little while and then UH Manoa in Hawaii. Um, but I think Pepperdine just really... I think the community of Pepperdine was something that I was really drawn to. I took a tour here in the middle of COVID, actually, when there was nobody here. But the way that the staff and the students that were leading the tour had just made Pepperdine feel so welcoming and so at home um, just made me feel very, like... I just felt like a sense of belonging here almost. Um, and then I was able to talk to a few of the students that were here just about like classes and what Pepperdine is really like when like obviously when we come back to school like after COVID. And they just made it seem like such a fun school where you can really get to know people on like a deeper level just because the school is smaller. And I think that's also just something I was kind of looking for in a school. Um, and yeah, and it's honestly just lived up to my expectations since I've been here. Oh, well, then Pepperdine. Pepperdine's very lucky, and so are you. So now as I was climbing up the stairs, and we're still in the pandemic, I noticed no masks and everything. So how do you feel that Pepperdine's been handling the pandemic and right now where we're at with COVID? Yeah, I I honestly think Pepperdine's been doing a good job of, or at least they've been handling COVID in a way that's been comfortable for students, staff, and like the community. At least that's what I've seen in my personal beliefs. Um, at the beginning of the school year, it was very strict on COVID and COVID testing. Um, and especially after kind of just following like LA's, uh, LA County's like COVID mandates mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So even after LA started being a little bit more lenient about like mask mandates and um, COVID testing stuff, Pepperdine still kind of kind of played it safe a little bit and hanging back just to make sure that the students and staff like are being safe from COVID. And I think that it's something that they still take very seriously, but as COVID's obviously like changing and LA's changing yeah, yeah. too, they're kind of just adapting to whatever changes are being made. I think COVID it's like your mascot, the waves, right? It's very <laughs> yeah. fluid and changes yeah. rapidly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Um, and so here, Pepperdine University, do you feel that because it's a Christian campus and it's a smaller community, mm -hmm. though the beach doesn't hurt either, yeah. it brings this community uh, to be really close? Because I'm surprised yeah. all the activity on campus, totally. tables being out, uh -huh. small groups sitting with each other. How yeah. is that? Um, yeah, I, I totally think that Pepperdine is a really close-knit community. Um, mm -hmm. I think, yes, obviously it is a smaller school, so you're kind of just bound to know people a little bit more like that. Um, but I think that just the way that the Pepperdine community is, like, really wants to get to know their students and mm -hmm. really wants to bring, like, that vibrant social life to its campus. Um, and I think especially after COVID, something I've talked about a lot with, like, upperclassmen is that it's something that they really missed and, like, staff members, too, saying, like, during COVID, there was, like... Like, no one was on campus, and everyone obviously was on Zoom. And so I think that coming back was something that is just really exciting for everyone. Yeah. And so, like, people are just really loving being able to connect with people again and, like, be in person and just, like, I don't know, just really enjoying the Pepperdine community and, like, being face-to-face -face with one another again. Oh, no, it's really important. Now, but there is fraternities and sororities, mm -hmm. but there's also no co-ed dorms. Yes. Right? So tell me how that yes. plays out on a Christian campus. Yeah, so the um, the dorming situation is, um, like, it's not co-ed. Um, and freshman housing, it's, I think it's maybe, like, 50, like, 50 students of, like, the same gender in each um, house. And even though it's not co-ed, I feel like 
it's Pepperdine isn't super strict. Like you can still have like friends of the opposite sex like come and hang out in your dorms, and like it doesn't restrict you from like still making those types of like connections and friendships. I feel like some students at other like universities like it's easier for them just because not all housing like is the same as Pepperdine's um but I mean I haven't seen any problems with it like I personally like I I don't know I feel like it's just still a fun way to like connect with the people in your dorm but then also like you still get to have those connections with people outside of it I heard and to Mm -hmm. verify these rumors Uh community service require three times a week seminars Mm -hmm. you know what is that true is it not true and then are they great or is it very strict what are they all about? Yeah, so um, I don't think those are necessarily true. I know that for freshmen and sophomores, there is a um, there's a semin- like a once a week seminar that we have to that uh, program that like I went through last semester and I did this semester for like I think four or six weeks, um, and it's pretty much like it's kind of like a skill like a skill building program that Pepperdine does, just like help students with resilience and like being able to develop like other skills skills that like kind of. Build character almost I I enjoyed my one last semester you can choose which ones you're in um, I really enjoyed my one last semester I also enjoyed my one this semester too but I think they also just offer a bunch of different options of which ones um, and I think I just didn't necessarily enjoy mine this semester as much because it wasn't specific to something that I actually enjoyed. So I think if I had chosen a different option, it, I, my experience could have been a lot better, but I still really enjoyed it too. So. And you have a beautiful chapel. Um, wow, what a great peaceful place. Now yeah. is that, is, re, is chapel time required for every campus regardless of their religious belief? And can mm-hmm. non-Christians come to here on campus? Yeah, totally. So the, yeah, there aren't, aren't any chapel requirements or like, um, I guess, like church requirements, I guess. Yeah. you could say because Pepperdine is a Christian school um, but there aren't any requirements I think that that one like seminar thing kind of branches off of what people like would consider a like religious requirement um, just because in said seminar like it focuses on like skill and character building but also it does they do talk about just like different values that Pepperdine holds but not necessarily in a way that's like enforcing them onto the students mm-hmm. but more of like a this is why Pepperdine does this because of the values that we have yeah and so I think that Pepperdine isn't like like students of any like religious affiliation or non-affiliation are very much welcome at Pepperdine because I don't think that they don't force it on students at least that's not hasn't been my experience no no, no. and that's yeah. and I think that's been consistent mm-hmm. what I've been hearing and then does that require once a week or more it is once a week but it was it doesn't last for the entire semester and so we did it for maybe five or six weeks I think and then we didn't have to continue it after oh okay so yeah. all right so and then and it's a dry campus but it doesn't mean it has to, you have to be completely dry Mm-hmm. Of course, after you're 21, yes. <laughs> off campus too, yeah. right? Uh-huh. And then one of the things is as I was walking around the closed classroom, there's mm-hmm. a learning center, your mm-hmm. career center, yeah. science is off the hook. As a public relations major, what have you heard and also with your other classmates about mm-hmm. the support you get not only in your classrooms, but then beyond that? Yeah, totally. So I I think that within the classrooms, at least, like the professors, I'm, I'll speak more for like the professor first. The professors try really hard to have those connections with their students like I know some of my friends have gone to like there are some faculty that live on staff I mean on campus and so they'll have like their classes come up to their house for dinner and like continue like classroom discussions or just like catch up about life and like just try to get to know them on more of a personal level Um, and I think that because the professors and faculty are all pretty much like experts I would say like within their field like they're very knowledgeable and are able to like help students with whatever like academic needs and questions that they have which I find like amazing because like having that type of support and knowing that someone that's like knows a lot about what you're trying to learn it's like very helpful in terms of beyond the classroom I think that that community is something that exists like outside of class like being able to make connections with your peers and with like your even not necessarily your professors but like fa- uh, the faculty that like oversees like your divisions like I have a friend that's very close with their faculty advisor um, and just being able to have that type of support and like or and like finding a direction of like where they want to go like after college and just kind of like life advice and like help yeah. I feel like is something that's awesome and is something that you can totally find here at Pepperdine. No I know 26 year olds who still need some life advice. <laughs> 
56 year olds too, especially those folks. No. So it's also, I was here 10 years ago oh, wow. and I was like, oh, like beautiful campus, really supportive um, and collaborative. But um, the diversity was in there. Mm-hmm. Um, based, you, could, you didn't see like there's too many people from different groups. And yeah. then here, I, I was thinking like, oh, is that going to be the same? But it feels a little bit different. But how does that um, feel for you? And then I don't know if you feel comfortable telling on the podcast, how, how do you identify? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and so I identify as a Pacific Islander Asian American. And I do think that Pepperdine, I think just like demographically, they're, um, it is a predominantly white school. Um, and diversity stems from many different places and at Pepperdine. Um, but I do think that there could be a little bit more opportunities for uh, not necessarily people of color specifically, but just different demographics at Pepperdine. However, that hasn't negatively impacted my experience here. I think that the community is still really strong and is really supportive. Um, I have a friend that is the head of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Council here at Pepperdine. And the work that they do to really just implement diversity on campus is like really strong, I think. Um, And so even though, I think even though there aren't necessarily as many, the minor, like it's all like the different groups on campus that aren't the majority, I think there is a lot more space for that and like for those types of experiences and stories to be heard on campus. But I do think that Pepperdine does make efforts to kind kind of try and like just kind of of, like give the microphone to those types of students and like really implement that within like their day to day. So having that safe place, mm-hmm. having um, that in- inclusion of hearing your voice mm-hmm. and, and seeing who you are and then constantly growing and making sure everyone feels belong, which yeah. we all have a lot of work that yes. we need to do. Yeah. And how is Pepperdine with diversity of ideas, whether it be in the classroom or in the mm-hmm. dorm room? Yeah, I, I think that Pepperdine... I feel like there's still some work that could be done. I like in terms of not only listening to the idea, like the different ideas that students in the community have, but being a lot better of like actually implementing them and like actually following through with said ideas. Um, but that doesn't mean that. But at the same time, I feel like Pepperdine's very open to li- like listening and hearing, and like I think that those actual like taking action steps are something that hopefully Pepperdine like continues on in the future. But I do still feel like voices are heard on campus mm-hmm. and that stories are very much accepted and like welcomed and those different experiences and perspectives are something that like Pepperdine values. Yeah, that's yeah. important. Yeah. And now Wade's your mascot. Yes. How are the sports? I know everyone talks uh-huh. about your tennis because your tennis courts are unbelievable. Yes. But do a lot of students go to the games and what are the big popular mm-hmm. games here? Um, Students? I mean, honestly, I feel like Pepperdine, like we obviously do support our sports teams. Um, basketball and we don't have a football team on campus just because our school is a lot smaller. Just for everyone to um, know if you're not familiar with Mali, but you're on a mountain and yes. and, the, and, the, and they're <laughs> surrounded by mansions. I think average is maybe $150 million Insane. you oh know, or more. I think I saw 200. I think the, the cheapest one I saw on sale is $21 million. Oh my gosh, that's insane. Yes, That's yes. crazy. Yeah, yes. So. Yeah, so there isn't room for a football field, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say that basketball, vo- uh, volleyball, our women's soccer team is amazing. Um, yeah, so those are a lot of like our tennis team as well like um a lot of our teams on campus oh and our men's golf team i think they won the championship last year which right. is incredible um yeah i think that students definitely support athletics on campus just because like i think not as much as other like bigger schools just because like pepperdine is i think pepperdine's more like academic heavy and so like students yeah. um i feel like at a, a lot of schools it's either like it's not necessarily a balance of like academics and sports like favor. It's more of just like one or the other. And I think that Pepperdine kind of leans more on the like academic focus side. But we do still love our sports teams and do still love supporting them whenever like their games are here. Oh no, I mean it was a competitive year for mm-hmm. students to get in recently. Mm-hmm. So it's like uh, it was very yeah. different ten years ago. Yeah. So it's like oh you had that high GPA and you still didn't <laughs> get in and you've done a lot, Insane. right? Insane. I don't honestly. I can't believe that I'm even here. Like oh very, no no very no. Happy that I, am. I can't believe it's not just about the GPA. It's about that whole person, which is what Pepperdine is all about, yes, right? So true. if you had to give Pepperdine, if they were listening to this, mm-hmm. words of wisdom of one thing that you think is that you would change or mm-hmm. to improve, what would that be? I think I... Hmm, that's a good question. I feel like I would say to listen more to the student, like, students, not necessarily student voices, but 
um, student opinions and suggest like student feedback. Yeah, I think that that's a big one. Um, I know listen that, and follow through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Listen <laughs> and follow through. I know that a big one. This is actually a change that will be happening, Pepperine. Um, but like our cafeteria, for example, I know that students aren't the biggest fan of the ca- our cafeteria food, but they recently just announced that they're switching like the people that provide food for our campus. Okay, oh, and so I think that that's a good example. But it's kind of hard down the street.